Nowadays, we're so focused on technology, camera gear, and its price. But when we take a moment to detox and go back to the basics, it can feel new all over again, like a breath of fresh air. Hi, my name is Jorge. Welcome. In this channel, we merge creativity and productivity to try to live a more fulfilling life. In the previous video, we talked about lack of motivation, not feeling motivated enough to go out and take photos. But we also talked about ways to overcome that and get you going. I call it my creative cycle. And this right here is a fun and easy way to overcome that lack of motivation and get myself going again with photography. We'll be talking about the fun and easy way to use disposable cameras and reviewing the Fujifilm Quick Snap Flash 400. Let's get started. Disposable or single-use cameras are sealed, affordable, and easy to use, made out of cheap plastic and have a low-quality lens. The ease of use and fun aspect is the reason why you're buying this camera. In fact, you're not really paying for the camera, you're paying for this. These come with a Superior Extra 400 speed film roll, which gives you a total of 27 exposures. Once you're done and you're already taking the 27 exposures, you take the camera to a developing center and they normally keep it as a recycling method. Uh, you could keep it and reuse it. It is kind of a pain in the butt. It's really not worth it in my opinion. If you want to continue to shoot film, just get a film camera and get film separate as well. But there's also some other important specs to know about this camera. The ASA or ISO level is already in the box 400. But by looking at the specs, we know that this is a 32 millimeter F10 lens. It always shoots at one over 100th of a second. And very important, the minimum focus distance is one meter. And I learned this the hard way. I went out in the boat and took some photos without reading the specs and after developing the film I realized that some of these photos are just way too close. It was never going to be in focus. You have an option to enable or disable the flash and like older film cameras you still have to wind up the roll. And for those of you who don't have a lot of experience with film it's important to note that film does expire. So when you're buying some of these, the expiration date of the film will be written on the box, but also at the bottom of the camera as well. So what you're really paying for is an easy and affordable way to get film into the hands of consumers to get you started. And if you really like it and you want to elaborate on it, then you can move into dedicated film and dedicated film cameras as well. I picked up two of these to get myself familiar with the camera and also to have a backup in case I messed up any of the shots or any of the way you're supposed to use the camera. But it's very simple. You wind up the film, you take the shot, wind up the film, take the shot. That's really it. Uh, flash if you want to use a flash, although I don't recommend it. Feels really cheap, really plasticky because it is. It is a really affordable way to get you shooting. Uh, it's more about the fun experience of doing the experiment instead of uh, the high quality or the results. So let's get this out of the way. This is just not the best quality you can get. This is just for the fun of trying it and for the fun of doing it. It is not a rangefinder style position of the optical viewfinder. So my nose always is blocking the way, which, you know, it's really annoying. It's a plastic soft lens, so it does not handle light and flares really well. And I feel like 60 or 70% of the time, all the photos are out of focus as well. <laughs> So keep that in mind. But every now and then you can get a photo that you really like that has the cool tones and colors from the 60s and 70s and 80s and reflects that film style as well. 
This is a great way to get you started and if you like film, you can get a film camera and get into developing your own film because this is about 10 to $15. And developing the film is another 10 to $15 as well. So every time you buy one of these is about $30 in total. Let's say 20 in the US, I think. So by the time you bought and develop about 20 of these, you can probably afford a decent entry-level camera to get you started with photography. Another thing I realized is even though the ASA or ISO is rated at 400, you need a lot of light when using this camera. A lot of light. I had about 15 photos at nighttime that did not develop well and they're completely useless. And some of the ones in sunny environments are not really that bright or that sharp anyways. So keep that in mind. While taking a look at the files, I'm pleasantly surprised to say that you can edit some of these. Not heavily editing like a really clean JPEG from Fujifilm or a RAW file, but there is some room there to play with the colors, the tones, the shadows, especially the highlights. Film, even really entry-level cheap film like this, handles highlights very, very well, which is a pleasant surprise. Especially for my style of photography, I already mentioned before that I like contrasty dark photos. Protecting the highlights and the brightest part of my image is always a priority with my X100V or F or T. But with film, it's a bit more forgiving. There's a bit more room in the highlights to bring it down, which is really cool. So, is this a fun little camera to use? Absolutely. Is it going to replace my X100V? Come on. The way I see it, this is a fun way to get you started with film if you never shot film before, or it's a way to get you back into your photography rhythm and get you motivated again in taking photos and going out and about and exploring, or a mix of both. I could see people that have never taken photos before grabbing one of these and having a blast and enjoying the results. And I can also see people that have been shooting professionally for years grabbing one of these and just not thinking about the technical aspect and just enjoying the process, teaching their family or their kids how to take photos. Uh, friends, relatives, things like that. So it has uh, an application, it has room to exist. It's there for a reason, it makes money, but it's up to you. What do you think? How do you feel about this? Leave a comment down below, I'd be happy to hear what you think. There's a lot of things happening in the world right now, like a global pandemic. And if you always wanted to get into photography, but you don't feel like you have the resources or you don't know where to start, this is a great way to get your feet wet and get you started with photography and see if you like it before you invest into a camera system or to get you motivated to get out of the rut and keep you going with your photography. But that is it for today. If you found this video helpful or valuable, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, for giving me your time and your energy, and good luck with your creative process.